الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله نحمده حق حمد ونستعين به ونستغفره ونسترشده ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أدى الأمان وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وبإذن الله محى الغم وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون One verse and two hadith The verse itself, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam gives us three comprehensive meanings The one hadith is going to give us three, level, three levels of responses And the last hadith inshallah ta'ala is going to give us a three levels of blessings that we have. As for the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Surah Al-Anbiya, إِنَّ هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً وَأَنَا رَبُّكُمْ فَعْبُدُونَ My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, the verse many of us have memorized, and the hadith many of us know. But today we bring a different feeling. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this ummah is one ummah. We understand the theory of one. But what is the name, what is the meaning of the word ummah? When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brothers and sisters in Islam has been reported crying, Ummati, Ummati, my Ummah, my Ummah, my Ummah. What does it mean to belong to the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What does the word Ummah means? Sometimes we say, well, translate as a nation. Nations have borders. Nations have ethnicities. Nations have races. Ummah is more than that. Ummah, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, as it came in the Muhit in the dictionary, Arab dictionaries, have three meanings. The first one, whether you speak Arabic or don't speak Arabic. You know the moment I say Ummah is from the word Um, which is which means mother. Motherhood. The first word, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, is telling us that the Ummah of the Prophet are brothers and sisters of one another. As a matter of fact, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, in Islam, faith relationships are stronger than blood relationships. Let me say that again. Faith relationships are stronger than blood relationships. As a matter of fact, early Muslims, brothers and sisters in Islam, the inheritance system Al Mirath, the inheritance system was based on faith. 
When somebody passes away, subhanAllah, it's his brother in faith or sister in faith who inherited his money. Not necessarily his blood brother because they were not Muslim at that time. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed wa ulil arham that the, 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 the uh, um, inheritance system should be based on blood and so on. So ummah, brothers and sisters in Islam, our mother that gave birth to all of us, subhanAllah, is al-Islam. Thus, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, the word nationality does not give that word justice. Because nationality, tribe, clan, skin color means absolutely nothing with the word ummah. Second meaning. In the word ummah, brothers and sisters in Islam means a generation. Tilka ummatun qad khalat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran as he talks about the ummah, the generation of Sayyidina Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that's a generation that have passed. Yet, we still connect with Ibrahim alayhi salam, don't we? We still connect with our ancestors, don't we? When I say Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu wa ardah, we still have the love for that generation. We still have the love for the companions of the prophets. We still have the love for the tabi'een and tabi'een and pious people. We still have the connection with Imam Ghazali and all the a'imma subhanallah. So not only does it mean motherhood, it also means a generation, brothers and sisters in Islam. A generation that stems all the way from Adam alayhi salam to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all the people that believed in these messages. Thirdly, the third definition of the word ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Sayyidina Ibrahim kana ummah. Which means if we describe a person that this person is an ummah, that means the person that have all pious characteristics all pious characteristics subhanallah Allah call us kuntum khayra ummatin you are the best ummah and thus if you look, if you take all these three definition motherhood a generation and all the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant for this ummah all the pious quality a definition of the, of the word Ummah, brothers and sisters in Islam, is a pious generation of a family that's connected with faith. That's who we are. A pious generation of family that is connected with faith. And thus, we love one another. We care for one another. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu wa arda, brothers and sisters in Islam, was in Medina. And he used to say, لو أن بغلة عثرت في العراق. He said he used to say, if there's a hole in the streets of Iraq, and a donkey is to trip on that hole, Allah will ask me, how come I did not care for fixing that street for that donkey? Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Saddiq, he said, Wallahi inni la'afrah. He used to say, Wallahi, I rejoice when I hear a cloud have covered Yemen and the rain came down to earth to the to the to the to the uh, to the land of Yemen and he was in Medina and wallahi brothers and sisters in Islam we are people who are saddened to see the news from the earthquake in Morocco to the flood in Libya it's hard to watch it's hard to watch. It's been a hard week, brothers and sisters in Islam. But you see, we are one ummah. When everybody's coming to help one another. We see that one ummah, brothers and sisters in Islam, where Algeria is now helping the people of Morocco. And when the people of Morocco themselves now are going to Libya to help them out. Just before we were starting to talk, subhanAllah, I was talking to one of the brothers from Morocco. I said, we're going to be raising money for Morocco and Libya today. The Moroccan brother himself, he said, no, send it to Libya. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And perhaps you have seen 
Everything on TV, how we are one ummah. But what really struck me the most is the people of Palestine. <laughs> They're under occupation. The people of Palestine under occupation in the West Bank, they're raising money for the brothers in Morocco and for the brothers in Libya. Or the demonstrations in Gaza, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inshallah liberate the people of Gaza. If they said, if the border is open, we'll be the first one to go help. We are one ummah. The one hadith. The first hadith I want to share with you, brothers and sisters in Islam. That the Prophet ﷺ said, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَاهُمِّهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ The Prophet ﷺ in this one hadith, we also, all of us know this hadith. He said the similitude, the Prophet ﷺ tell us that as an ummah, we are one body. One body, one part. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if one part aches, the entire body would ache. And the entire body would stay up with fever. بِالسَّهَرِ وَالْحُمَّةِ Stay up all night long with fever and aches. You cannot separate. I remember when I had a hand surgery. I cannot separate my hand from my body. Well, the pain was in my palm. My entire body was all up all night long in pain. We're connected. The Prophet gave us this beautiful analogy that we are one body. But then, here's the three levels of responding. Wallahi, I've read this hadith many times. This is three, there are the Prophet ﷺ give us three levels of responding when we have a calamities in the community, subhanAllah, around us. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ One, وَتَرَاحُمِهِمْ Two, وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ Three. Those are three words, brothers and sisters in Islam, that have three levels of understanding. Going from the least to the best. We could have, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, we could have, we could have feeling and compassion with our brothers and sisters. And that's good. I call this good. <laughs> that's a good that's a good beginning that we have compassion, subhanallah. That we have ta'atuf. Ta'atuf means compassion and feeling with the others. Subhanallah. That we feel with the others, that we watch what we watch, we cry, we make dua for others. That's that's one level. I call it the level of a Muslim. There's always three levels in Islam Muslim, Mu'min, Muhsin. The first level, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, you feel with your brothers, ta'atufihim, right? You feel, just, just a feeling. You cry, you make dua for them, that's good. But the second level is a, a level of a believer. So that's, that's good and there's a better, better level. The Prophet Sallallahu said, ta'rahumihim, rahmah, mercy. Mercy for our brothers and sisters, subhanAllah. Yes, not only we're feeling with them, but our heart is aching for them. Not only our heart is aching for them and we're making dua for them, but we'll help them in any way we can, subhanAllah. That's rahmah. Irhamu man fil ard, yarhamukun man fil sama. You reflect on the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We want to have mercy on our brothers, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy on us. Man la yarham, la yurham. The Prophet ﷺ said, we want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore we have mercy on our sisters and brothers, insha'Allah ta'ala. That's the second level. But the first level, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, tawaddihim. Wood. Right? This is a beautiful word, brothers and sisters in Islam. This is the word we use, subhanallah, when two people are getting married. When two people are getting married, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, He planted in your heart wood for one another. Mawadda is divine love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you're willing to do whatever it takes, including going above and beyond. Including preferring the 
preferring the other need over your need. That's what wood means. Because it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the name, a beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Wadud. And this name, Al-Wadud, had in it Wadda. And Wadda in Arabic means determination. So we're not only brothers and sisters in Islam, that we not only have only compassion and we're crying and we're making dua, not only our heart is aching and we do some kind of an action, but we prefer other people's needs over our needs. The teams from Morocco now are going to Libya. Ya Allah! This Ummah of the Prophet وسلم, is amazing! This brother was sitting here today, subhanAllah, he said, send the money to, send the money to, 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 uh, to Libya. Alhamdulillah, we're okay in Morocco. After more than 3,000 people died. And Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib, radiyallahu anhu wa arda, brothers and sisters in Islam. Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib, the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They vowed to fast three days. Sayyidina Ali went out to work. This way they could have dinner. And he comes the first day with some barley, wheat, barley. Sayyida Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet, she grinded the barley and made three loaves. One for her to break her fast, one for her husband to break his fast, and one for Al Hassan Al Hussein to eat. And as they are about to break their fast the first day, here comes my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, a miskeen, a needy person, knocking on the door. Qala ya ahla bayti Rasulillah. He said, the, the person on, on, that person who was needy said, you are the household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are the household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm a needy person, I need some food. They gave him the three loaves. They break their fast on water. The second day, Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu arda, he goes again and he worked. This is the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The daughter of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They had no food. He worked and he brought the same amount of barley, the same amount of wheat. And she makes three, three, three loaves of bread again. Here comes an orphan knocking on the door of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu wa arda. O household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm an orphan. They gave him the three breads. They broke their fast on water. Comes the third day, subhanAllah, the same thing happened. He works for only three loaves of bread, subhanAllah. And here comes knocks on the door. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Asira, somebody who's just been freed from captivity. They gave him the bread. Now they're hungry. They go to the masjid, subhanAllah, perhaps they will have some food. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sees their pale face. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brothers and sisters in Islam, he smiles. Because Jibreel comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with this verse. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا إِنَّمَا مُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا it's not food, it was spiritual food. That to this day we read this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised that house because they feed for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they prefer other people over their own, their own need. They prefer people, other people on their needs subhanAllah. They prefer their other people's need over their need. And Allah say, because they love Allah, they feed the needy and the orphan and the captive. In the village of Tawfiqeen in Morocco, brothers and sisters in Islam, I was watching live a brother who has a non-profit organization in that area. 
with a long beard and you could see that he's a person of belief he's working he's going from one village to another from one village to another in some in some areas you cannot have cars to go from one village to another and as the interviewer from Al Jazeera make an interview with him we just learned that this man himself was helping everybody else lost his mother his father and his wife he lost his mother and his father and his wife and the guy from Al Jazeera now emotional asking him what did you do he said they are under the mercy of Allah but those people is now depending on the mercy that Allah have bestowed upon me to give them my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are one ummah we are one body the last hadith or the second hadith with three understandings of blessings Muhammad Arwi was interviewed from Libya and he could also tell subhanallah that's a man of faith he said now I know the meaning of this hadith the hadith all of us know Man asbaha minkum aminan fi sirbihi mu'athan fi jasadihi indahu quta yawmihi fakannama huyizat lahu dunya bi hazafirha the hadith brothers and sisters in islam talks about the three levels of blessing that all of us have but muhammad lost it all muhammad lost 150 members of his family wiped out by the flood Earlier, the earlier khutbah, one of the brothers from Libya here, I just asked him, said, how's your family in Libya? And he said, I have 35 missing to this day. 35 missing. He, sit, he sat right here in the first khutbah, subhanallah. The hadith say, if you wake up in the morning, aminan fi sirbihi, safe in your surroundings, safe in your house and your surroundings. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, brothers and sisters in Islam. If you woke up this morning feeling safe in your house and you're surrounding your city and your nation, say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In Ayat Yahya, in Morocco, another story, Subhanallah, of a mother and a daughter. A mother, Subhanallah, and a father, and a daughter and a son. Said they, we feel that the house shaken. So my nine-year-old daughter, he said, the, 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 the daughter is re relating the story. She said, I took my brother, who's two years old. The brother was two years old and, and the daughter was nine years old. And, and my mother and father were behind us. Said, as the house about to collapse, my mother pushed me out of the house. She pushed me out of the house where the house collapsed on them. On CNN, she was asked, what are you going to do now? There's no family, there's no, it's all gone. What are you going to do? You know what this nine-year-old said? My mother and father have died there with Allah, but Allah never dies. Nine-year-old brothers and sisters in Islam. Wallahi, this deen, brothers and sisters in Islam, is, is awesome. This deen is precious. This nine-year-old, this is not my word, this is the word of the reporter on CNN. He said, I don't know what kind of a belief system those people have. We have an Islam, brothers and sisters in Islam. The Prophet said, if you wake up in the morning, safe in your surroundings, safe in your body, we should say, Alhamdulillah. Mu'athan fi jasadihi. You're not sick, Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah. Have you seen Habiba and Muhammad, also two Moroccan? They come from two different villages. And Habiba and Muhammad decided to have a wedding. And the beautiful culture that we have, that weddings sometimes are now in, on, out in the open in the village, 
in the in the in in this in the yard of the village. And because everybody came to that wedding, those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved saved them. So if you wake up this morning and your house safe in your house and you are healthy in your body and you have enough food for one day the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said this is as if you're in this whole life this whole dunya is under your feet this whole as if you have your own this whole dunya what are we going to say to muhammad arwi who lost 150 people from his family. Brothers and sisters in Islam, servants of Allah, we are one ummah. I remember raising money here for Pakistan, Bangladesh, not too long ago, Turkey and Syria, and now Morocco and Libya. We are one ummah. We collectively hurt, and we collectively come together to help. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم. الحمد لله، الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما. Often in these situations, sometimes. And I see it sometimes on social media. Even overseas, Jumaas. There was a lot of concentration on where did the earthquake come from? And where's the flooding come from? And yes, there are many hadith that earthquakes and floodings and rain and wind are soldiers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a matter of fact, people are also sharing on social media and a khutbah I heard from Lebanon this morning, an entire hadith reminding people towards the end of time. That towards the end of time, the Prophet ﷺ that we see more earthquakes, more flooding, and they become more frequent. And that's a yes. But I'd rather share with you one hadith that the Prophet wasallam, a man came to the Prophet wasallam, and he said, Mata sa'a? O Prophet of Allah, when is the hour? When is the hour, O Prophet of Allah? Is it near? Is it far? When is, when is the hour? And you know what the Prophet wasallam, did? He focused that man from trying to get philosophical to one thing. The Prophet said, وَمَا أَعْدَدْتَ لَهَا So don't, the Prophet say, he asked the Prophet, when is the hour? When is the hour going to be? And the Prophet said, he focused that man, because sometimes we get so philosophical, and we say, this is happening, and this is happening. Yes, the, the speech of, of Allah is the truth, and the hadith is the truth, yes. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, what did you prepare for it? So the man is asking, when is the hour? And the Prophet said, what did you prepare for it? What we see in is not a test for the brothers and sisters in Morocco and in Libya. What we see on TV is a test for all of us. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَّمَهُ Prosperity is a test. And adversity is a test. And it's a bigger test, brothers and sisters in Islam, for us here. They have to deal with it every single day. So if you allow me, brothers and sisters in Islam, after the salat, inshallah ta'ala, to please raise some money for our dear brothers and sisters in Morocco and in Libya, insha'Allah ta'ala, just only three minutes. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzuqna attiba'ah. Wa arina al-baatila baatilan warzuqna ajtinaabah. 
اللهم كن معنا ولا تكن علينا اللهم اللهم انك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا we make dua to our brothers and sisters in Islam inshallah ta'ala in Libya and, 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 and inshallah ta'ala in Morocco Allahumma inna nas'aluka wa natawassalu ilayk Allahumma inna nas'aluka wa natawassalu ilayk bi asma'ika al-husna wa bi anaka anta Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa ant wahdaka la sharika lak ya, ya, ya mughith al-mustaghithin ya aman al-khaifin أن تغيث أهلنا في في ليبيا وسوريا يا رب اللهم أغثهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغثهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اكشف عنهم الكرب يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عجل عجل عليهم بالفرج يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم تقبل موتاهم وشهداءهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اشف مرضاهم يا أرحم الراحمين أو الله أكسبت الدد الشهيد يا الله يا الله يا الله هيل Heal the injured, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, uplift the calamities upon them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, be with them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, heal them, Ya Allah. Console them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, be their solace, Ya Allah. Ibad al-Rahman, inna Allah ya'muru bil-adli wal-ihsani wa ita'i dhil-qurba wa inha anil-fahshai wal-munkari wal-baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon. Wa'afim as-salam.